Well, good evening, folks. Let's go and get started with the service tonight. 430. 430 in your hymn book. And stand with me. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. We're looking forward to the service tonight. Brother Brian Fredericks is going to be teaching from the Word of God in Genesis chapter 1. And the guys are passing out the prayer list. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Just glad that you are here tonight. Windows of heaven. All right, here we go. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garment. He gave your robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. And that's why I'm happy tonight. All right, you know what we're going to do? We're going to add some extra I'm happies in there later on. We would need to say happy birthday to Ms. Mary Karowski. Today is her birthday. I said, Mary, are you 39 today? She said, no, no. We're going to sing to her in just a few minutes. Jared, welcome back. Traveling out to Texas. Crystal, get in there okay? Wonderful. Praise the Lord for that. Well, good. Uh, we usually start the service with an attribute of the Lord and something we can praise God for. Um, usually I ask you for one, but if you'll indulge me, I picked one for tonight. And it's kind of going along with the, the songs we're going to sing tonight about heaven. Okay? Uh, our Father which art in heaven. Okay? Uh, what's something that we can praise God about heaven? What can we say about heaven? What are you looking forward to about heaven? It's eternal. Lasts forever. Amen. Going to be there forever and ever and ever. Somebody else? Some, just something about heaven you could praise God for. Crystal? No goodbyes. Never having to say goodbye. No more separation. Amy. Okay, Amy. Yes. Uh, heaven rules. Uh, heaven rules. Heaven rules. Heaven rules. Heaven reigns. Amen. God is sovereign. Family reunion up there. Looking forward to being reunited with loved ones up there. No rust or dust. No rust or dust, Angie. I like that. That's good. No rust or dust. Amen. I like that. I haven't heard that before. That's, that's pretty good. Yes, Matthew, what do you want to praise the Lord about heaven for, buddy? I think it can be safer and that there's no people that are actually getting hurt. Matthew said that we can be safe there. And actually, no people there will hurt us. Amen. Yes, there's so much going on in our world today, you know, for the thing that's happening. Okay. Is anybody else? Somebody you want to praise God about heaven for? Anybody? No more tears. No more tears. I like the no mores in the Revelation. No more tears. No more, uh, what is it? No more sorrow. No more, what's that, Irving? No more heartaches, all that stuff, gone, be totally gone. No more pain, no more suffering, it'll all be done. Okay, we're going to praise the Lord. We're going to sing the verse and add the three happies at the end, and then we'll have prayer, okay? All right, here we go. Go ahead, Miss Amy. The windows of heaven are open, the blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart Since Jesus made everything right I gave up my old tattered garment He gave me a robe of pure white I'm feasting on manna from heaven And that's why I'm happy And that's why I'm happy That's why I'm happy tonight All right, now you sang it I'm not going to ask you to sing it again Can you give me a smile? Okay? <laughs> well, good. Well, let's pray. Lord, we do want to thank you for this place that you have prepared for us. You said that you go to prepare a place for us. And Lord Jesus, you do all things well. And we just want to turn thanks to you for heaven and for the blessings of it. That it is eternal, Lord, and it's forever and ever. And there are no more pain and suffering and crying and no more worries, no more fears. And, and, Lord, we'll be reunited with our loved ones and with, most of all, to see you face to face. Tonight we want to praise you for the wonderful thing you've created of us going to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. If you have not received the...
prayer list. Would you raise your hand and the guys will get that to you? Okay. And we will do that in just a minute. Anybody? And we'll take some prayer requests tonight. Okay, I got two or three over. Eli, I think, went to get some more. If they don't have ready, ready available, they'll make some more. We'll get them to you. Okay? All right. Anybody like to add somebody to the prayer list or something you just want to praise God for tonight? Okay. Anyone? Ryan, yes. Okay. McKinley is sick. Let's pray for McKinley if we could. Here, please. Okay. Praying for McKinley. All right. Anyone else tonight? Yes, Deborah. Okay. So Deborah is asking for salvation as a prayer request for her sister in law. And what was her name again, Deborah? This Jalila. Okay. Okay. Jalila. Okay, Y A L I. Did I get that right? Okay, A. And who's the other person? Emily. Emily. Okay, praying for Jalila and for Emily for their salvation. Okay, someone else tonight? Yes, Matthew. That his stomach can get better. All right, Matthew having a little stomach issues. Okay, that his stomach can get better. Okay. Yes, Brian. Uh, Daniel. <laughs> yes, it's the beard. I can tell. Yes, Jessica's grandfather passed away this morning at 5 o'clock. If you would, to pray for the family. Okay, I think. Do we have that? At? Okay. Okay, praying for wisdom and when to go. Okay, super. Irving? Josh Wainwright, okay. That's your grandson, praying for his health issues. Josh Wainwright. Okay. Yes, Jared. Amen. Okay, I know they were trying to, so, okay. Okay, amen. Pray, folks, those watching back home, too, praying for uh, as, as Crystal and Kyle out in Texas that they were trying to uh, obtain a house and look like it's going to go through. So keep that in prayer if you would, Okay. Okay, anyone Anyone else? Pray for Elizabeth Farmer. Don't forget she's taken off Jennifer to go. She arrived, okay? All right. Keep her. She'll be gone five or six weeks in, in the schooling in the military. Miss Jean, this is, this is Miss Hall's sister, Jean. Okay, folks, you guys have seen her before. Pray for peace. Definitely pray for peace. Sunday night, the Lord willing, just so happens in the next beatitude is blessed are the peacemakers. And we'll try to share some thoughts with you then. Yes, Josh. All right. City employees, mask mandates have been lifted. And that's a, a blessing. All right. Weekly testing for unvaccinated people have been lifted also in the <laughs> Pray it stays that way. Amen. All right. Wonderful. Anyone else tonight? Yes, honey. Yes, Eric and Lauren still looking for a house, we believe. So let's uh, pray for that to happen soon. They only have like two and a half weeks, I think, left. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, 
Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah uh, Carrie just shared with us that he had a call from a friend who she shared with Carrie that a friend of Carrie's actually took his own life today. So if you would to please pray for that family. It's good to see Jose and Aaron here tonight. And little Ireland's in the back, right? What? Yes, yes, the separation anxiety, yes. Between dads and moms and their babies, yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Anyone else tonight? Yes. Mr. Nate. That, I, oh, yeah. The coronavirus would go away. Amen, buddy. I'm there with you. Yes, Abby. Yes. Yes, we heard that, that the abortion act that, that was trying to be enacted in... in Washington did not go through. That was a great answer to prayer, folks. Uh, tremendous answer to prayer. Okay. Thank you for mentioning that, Abby. Yes. Yes, the men's prayer retreat starts tomorrow through Saturday. Uh, still not too late. Any of you guys would like to go? It's $99 to go. Or if you, if you want to just come one night, I'm sure the camp will work that out too. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes, Rick, I'm sorry. Okay, Rick's nephew, Rick and Angie's nephew for uh, Matthew Kincaid. Andrew. Uh, Andrew Kincaid for surgery, for back. Okay. And Rick, did you have another one? Okay, anyone else? Okay. Uh, Matthew, mm hmm. That the war in Ukraine can stop. Yes, praying for peace, definitely. Okay. All right, what we want to do, tell you what, we're going to sing one more song about heaven. I got some more we're going to do. But after that, we're going to invite you to the altar to pray, okay? And then we're going to, maybe another song or two in an offering. And we're going to do Miss Mary. Happy birthday to her. We'll sing happy birthday to her. And we're going to try to give this over to Mr. Bryant so he can... Now share with us these wonderful truths from the Word of God. Okay, I've got 414. I like this song. I remember learning it as a teenager many years ago. This world is not my home. Go ahead and stand with me if you would. 414. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't be like home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't be at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me. That's one thing I know. You're pardoning me, and now I onward go. I know he'll take me through, though I am weak and poor. And I can't be at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know. I have no friend like you If heaven's not my home Then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me From heaven's open door And I can't be at home In this world anymore Let's do the last verse there Just up in glory land I live eternally The saints on every hand Are shouting victory No friend.
friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, we'll invite you to come to pray at the altar. We've gone over our prayer list, and then also, or you can pray in your seat, and then I'll tr close us at the end there, and then we'll have uh, an offering and another song or so, and we've got a little, two, three guys going to do a song for you tonight, okay? All right. Our Father, we are so glad for so many praises on the list tonight, Lord. Uh, thank you for getting Crystal and the babies and out to Texas to be with Kyle. We pray your continued help and blessing there with the house. Thank you for Jared making it back safely. Thank you for safe travels. Uh, thank you, Lord, for lifting the mask mandates that, that Josh mentioned. Lord, we praise you for that. And we pray for health and strength continued for us. And then, uh, Lord, for praising uh, for, Crystal mentioned praising for provision and, and babysitting jobs and so forth. Praise, praise God for that and going back to work yeah, full time. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer there for Crystal. And, Lord, I know there are many others that are in their hearts that if they just, we all could just stay, take time and praise you for your goodness to us. And, uh, Lord, we pray for the request tonight, Lord, many in salvation. Uh, pray for Cassie. I know Amy has prayed for Cassie for years. God, please save Cassie. Uh, for Eric and uh, Eric's uh, brother and, and, and loved ones that are not saved. We pray for their salvation. Uh, Lord, I know there are others probably on this list or they're burdened for their loved ones. I know that Ms. Deborah is definitely burdened for uh, her sister-in-law uh, and also for Emily, for Yelela and for Emily. Emily. And then, uh, Lord, we do pray for peace. We pray for Ukraine tonight, O oh God. Please protect those people from this wicked ruler who has come down upon this country. God, have mercy on them, we pray tonight. Uh, pray for peace. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Uh, you asked us and told us to pray for that, Father, and we pray for that tonight. Uh, we pray uh, for Darlene's health. I know she's going through some health issues right now. Please be with her tonight. I think of Rupert and Sandy. Lord, they've been falling a lot. I know Rupert has. I pray for their, their uh, healing and help and strength for them. And, uh, Lord, I know that Rupert has called his son to come and get them to take them back or take them to Texas. I, I pray your will be done in their lives, Lord. Um, uh, thank you for Jeremiah Cattell's and his family tonight. And, Lord, thank you for the good news that we received from him today about how he's going to be able to retire on Monday. We praise you for that and, Lord, for answered prayer. We pray for Jessica, Lord, and Daniel and the family. We ask you, Lord, to be with the family out there 
and out west. And Lord, I know the difficulties and, and a dear loved one, this, her grandfather passing away. We pray for that family tonight. Lord, give them wisdom and, uh, about a service uh, for that dear man. And then uh, we uh, thank you, Lord, for all the things you've done for us as a church family. And Lord, we love uh, each other and we love you. And I pray, Lord, that you will be lifted up and answer these requests tonight. Father, as only you can. Pray for Eric and Lauren also for a house or, or apartment. Lord, that you provide that soon too. I know there are other unspoken requests, Lord, upon this list. I know there are health issues of different friends that folks are going through. And uh, we pray for revival. We pray, Lord, for revival in this country. We pray for, uh, I know Pastor Jordan, as we talk from time to time, Lord, he so burdened to see revival down where he is now in North Carolina too and up here. And we pray for revival. We pray that you send revival. Uh, God, we pray for our country tonight. Pray for revival here at Central. Uh, we pray for Caleb Reed as he comes and preaches the revival services at the end of the month. God, we ask you to bless it. And Lord, and may, may our hearts just... Just uh, rejoice again. Restore unto us, Lord, again, the joy of our salvation. We thank you for that joy. In Jesus' name, we want to ask these things of you, Father. Amen. Amen. All right, keep your prayer list. Be praying now, okay? All right. You folks pray for us as we are going. Some of the guys are going to the camp starting tomorrow and the other ones that will be coming there. All right. We're going to have to sing. Not have to because we want to. To Ms. Mary, happy birthday to Ms. Mary. All right. Ms. Mary, I'm not going to ask you how, how old you are. Would you be glad to tell? 39 and a half? 79 today. Well, congratulations, Ms. Mary. Wish you many more. Okay. All right. Let's sing happy birthday. Ready? Here we go. Happy birthday to you. God bless you. Woo! To you. Amen, Miss Mary. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Yes, many, many more. Praise God for that. Okay, guys, come on down. We'll do the offering. And then I'm going to ask Eli and Carrie, and we're going to come and try to do a song for you. And we're going to turn it over to Mr. Brian here. Yes, Father. To learn more about your beautiful creation, God, and what you have to tell us about you and about this life in your book, God. We come here to thank you, God, for being uh, the only path to salvation, God. We ask we thank you for sending your son to, uh, to die on the cross to give us salvation. We ask that this offering be used to glorify and build your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Testing, can you hear me? Yeah, we're good. I like the old song. Ready? Talking about heaven. Here we go. Just over in glory land. I like the way they turn it. Glory land. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't like to share. 
Want it upside down? <laughs> I'm in one of those moods tonight. Okay. All right, Eli, you ready? Yes, sir. Yeah. I've a home prepared where the saints abide Just over in the glory land And I long to be by my Savior's side Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land just over in the glory land, there with the mighty host I'll stand. Just over in the glory land. Okay, stop. I need, I need my buddy, Mr. Al. Come on, Mr. Come on, Al. Mr. Al. We're doing the second one and the last one. All right, here we go. All right. Yeah, Carrie don't want to share either. <laughs> I am on my way to those mansions fair, just over in the glory land. Let to sing God's praise and His glory share, just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, there with the mighty hosts I'll stand, just over in the glory land. Okay, stop. Before we end this Mr. Time. Daniel, come on oh, up. Boy. I'm running out of mics, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's 413. 413. Yep, we're going to do the last verse there together. Ready? Don't smile. You might be next. All right, here we go. With the blood washed strong, I will shout and sing. Just over in the glory land. And hosannas to Christ the Lord and King. Just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land. Land, I'll join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land There with a mighty host I'll stand Just over in the glory land All right, stop. You ready? You don't need a songbook. You've sung this song for years. Do the first verse with us five up here. You ready? All right. First verse is, I have a home prepared where saints abide. Here we go. I have a home prepared where the saints abide, just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side, hey, just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land. There with the mighty host I'll stand, just over in the glory land. All right, stand. You would stand with us? Turn to the person next to you. I'm glad to say I'm glad you're here. Glad you're here. Glad and then give them a big old smile. And then sit down. <laughs> All right, Brother Brian, it's yours.
Yeah. Yeah. All right. I don't know. Can we? <laughs> It'd actually be kind of awesome if you couldn't. <clears throat> How's that? Yeah. All right. All right. How about them singing, you know? Guess y'all are going on the road next, don't you? <clears throat> All right. <laughs> okay. We're going to keep on going with our little creation study. Uh, before we do, though, let's uh, pray, and then uh, we'll jump right into it, okay? So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you, Lord, for another day of life that you've given us all. Thank you for this church, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity to be here tonight, each person that's here. Thank you so much, Lord, for the things that you do, for your creation, for the fact that you don't change, and that we can always have hope in that, hope in the, the day to come, and Jesus will be here soon, and thank you for that knowledge. Lord, going forward, <coughs> trying to... Uh, Present this information, Lord. Get me out of the way, and may you be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, it's been a little bit since I've been up here, but as is the standard for when I'm up here doing this thing, yes, uh, we're going to do a, a little bit of review. But uh, I actually condensed the review, so it's not going to be as long this time. So, <laughs> I'm sure everybody's happy about that. But. <laughs> I only do this just, you know, try to get the point across about what we're talking about. So we are starting Genesis 1-1 is where we're going to begin and then go from there. So, sorry, thing. Anyway, Genesis 1-1 says, in the beginning, God doesn't leave any question, doesn't leave any doubt. He's just letting you know, statement of fact, in the beginning, God, and then it goes, created. What did God create? The heaven and the earth. That's what he did. God created the heaven and the earth. The heaven... We referred to it as dimensional space. So the area, it is the three dimensions that we exist in. The earth is going to be the quantum particles of matter. Okay? I know that's a little bit out there, but uh, I'll uh, explain more of it as we go. When, the, when God created these, they were all unenergized. So God had to energize them. That's basically what he did. You keep on going to verse 2. It said, and the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. And then God said, everybody, what do you say? Light there be light. And? Pew. I always love that. And there was light. And at that point, everything got energized. Now, we're still not at the, at the uh, state of actually having molecules and all that stuff. But it is energized. It is moving. Okay. And uh, when God energized that, that light that we would call energy, in this case, he also did another thing right there. He divided them for us. He divided the light from the dark. That's what the Bible says. The day, day from the night. And then it says the evening and the morning were the first day. So these two elements here are still visible. We still have visible light. We still have visible dark. It's not like complete dark. There is still light there. So that's what God did here. He divided the light from the darkness. And in the next verse, I think this is seven, or I can't remember, but it's talking about the firmament. So if uh, we have a firmament, does anybody know, remember how big the earth is? Or let's go with this. What's the firmament? Anybody? Sky. Sky, okay. Does anybody remember what? Go ahead. Thin layer. Thin, stretched out layer. Very good. And we call it a thin, stretched out layer. Do what? Six miles. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> So we call it a thin stretched out layer because the earth has a diameter of about 8,000 miles, the earth itself. And then on top of that, the firmament is about now 60 miles. So if you take 60 and put it over 8,000, you can see the thinness there. There's a big difference in the two numbers. Okay. After he did that, <clears throat> well, not after he did that, part of making that firmament, uh, God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. So there's waters above and below this firmament. So what would that mean? Anybody? Remember, remember maybe what I was talking about last time? Nothing? All right, that's fine. 
What I believe it meant was that God created a canopy around the entire earth. And by doing so, he increased the air pressure because that canopy would have increased the air pressure. We can do the little, uh, we can, the amber that's in the mosquitoes and all that junk. You can find out that the oxygen content of the earth back when the, that stuff was made was 50% higher. So the oxygen is 50% higher and there's increased air pressure, okay? And the way that that would affect everything around is that humans, for example, could just breathe and enjoy it. Just taking a breath would be amazing. Uh, you could run for miles, hundreds of miles, and you would never be tired because your body was so saturated with oxygen, you, you'd always run. You'd never get tired. You heal really fast, too. <clears throat> and that's another thing we're going to talk about is how, or not that we're going to talk about, but the healing process. <clears throat> My helpmate who is not here uh, kind of talked me into this. So I was going to finish day two. Well, I'm still going to finish day two. We're going to finish day two tonight. Anyway, uh, but what she said, I was saying I wanted to show this video last time. I didn't get to show it, so I'm going to show it this time at the beginning. But it has to do with that canopy, but it also has to do with healing. And you may have heard of the person they're talking about, and that's why she was like, well, you need to show that because it shows a different side. Anyway, so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to watch a little bit of a video. It's about eight minutes. Yep, it is eight minutes. And then we're going to keep going. But he's going to explain canopy better than I do, and then he's also going to give you a... a a little example of what it does. Can everybody hear that? that. The 
evolutionary concept cannot really explain that because if the processes with increased energy, which I'll address in the next lecture, with increased complexity is causing the forms to accelerate in complexity, they certainly should accelerate in dexterity and size. Well, that's not the case. We find that we're bigger in the past. Human life forms were larger in the past, and incidentally, they were more intelligent in the past. But given these circumstances, with a little over two atmospheres of pressure, 25% oxygen in contrast to today's 21% oxygen, the brain, from conception on, would be hyper-oxygenated. Not to the point of toxicity. This is the perfect level. A little over two atmospheres of pressure, 25% oxygen. In the fetal formation of the brain, it would be enlarged to begin with. The cellular structure would be fed and nurtured from before the child was born. Then you would live in a context where your brain would be totally fed in all its capacity with oxygen. That means that every person sitting in this audience, if you were to live under these conditions and having been born under those conditions, would put Albert Einstein to shame in your intellectual capacity. You have that capacity. Why don't you use it? Well, we really can't to our fullest capacity. But if our brains, if the blood plasma were hyper-oxygenated today, that would solve a lot of problems. Oh, that does solve a lot of problems, including the dinosaurs. You see, with their small lung capacity, the hemoglobin cell can only take four oxygen molecules. Did you know that? The hemoglobin in the blood is saturated with four oxygen molecules. That's all it can take. And you can't get enough oxygen to the deep cell tissue of such bulk size. But Texas A&M University has found that under two atmospheres of pressure with slightly enriched oxygen, all the blood plasma becomes saturated with oxygen. That means that overnight, an open wound heals. Today, it takes 14 days for that open wound to heal. But overnight, under those hyper-oxygenated contexts, an open wound heals. Now, let's take it further. I think probably the best illustration of what it was like before the flood, or what it was like to recuperate before the flood, is found uh, in the experience of a little girl, probably the most famous little girl in the world. Does anyone here recognize the name Jessica McClure? How many recognize the name Jessica McClure? Every hand in the building, as far as I can see. Who's that little girl? She's a little girl who fell in a well in Midland, Texas. Fifty-eight and a half hours, her right leg was suspended behind her back. And for fifty-eight and a half hours, her right foot was in her face. That's a pretty difficult position to be in. She's a brave little girl. I'm not sure I could have held out that long. When they got to her, her right foot, because of its suspension and the lack of blood supply and oxygen, her right foot was black. And they were sure they were going to have to amputate her foot. You know what they did to that little girl? They rushed her to the Midland Hospital, rushed her to a hyperbaric medical chamber. They put her under two plus atmospheres of pressure, and they gave her 100% oxygen because they needed a quick fix. <laughs> now, she couldn't live under 100% oxygen for long periods of time, but you, they certainly needed it quickly. So, they essentially put her in a context like pre-flood man had. What happened to her right foot? In a few hours, it turned pink. And then, her toes began to turn pink. They thought at first they'd lose the entire foot, then they thought, well, they're not going to lose the foot, we'll lose all her toes. Then her big toe turned pink. Second, third, fourth, they finally lost the little pinky because it wouldn't turn pink. Well, what I'm doing is introducing an overview of the creation model. It appears that her body was designed to function and repair itself under those circumstances. Well, if that's so, her body had to be designed. And if that's so, her long-lost predecessors lived under 
under such a context? Well, okay, so. There is the video. Does anybody recognize baby Jessica, by the way? Does anybody know who that is? Yeah, I did too. As soon as I saw it, and then I <clears throat> saw part of the video, and then Jack was like, oh, you got to show them that. So, yeah, she was right. Yeah, It is pretty neat, though. <clears throat> but the, the concept is still the same. In the, a world that had a canopy of water around it with that increased air, air pressure and increased oxygen would do exactly what he's talking about. The healing process would be advanced like significantly uh the he even said i think he did say instead of 14 days it would take hours that's just absolutely amazing to me but that is kind of the world that god designed in the very beginning if you can imagine that that's what god did he didn't make the earth in such a way that you know it is today i said that wrong so he didn't the original creation was much different than it was today let's put it that way <clears throat> all right so all right, we're going to move on in a little bit of a Bible way here. So what I'm going to do is start with Genesis chapter 1, where we're at, read the next little part, and then we're going to go back and go over it. So we're in Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to start with verse 8. Shouldn't be too hard to find. <clears throat> and this is what it says, verse 8. And God called the firm of heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. There we go. All right, so second day is done. We're moving on now. So, starting at verse 9. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called, sea, called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. All right, we're going to stop right there. And actually, we're going to go way back. So we'll get to all of the third day sometime this year. So we're going to start with verse 9, though. <laughs> verse 9, it says, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. So, basically what that's saying is, God said, all right, let the dry land appear, let the water appear. So if you think about it, there was one area of water and one area of land. It didn't look like it looks today. Okay, That's what God made. He made one thing of earth and one thing of water. Uh, we'll do that in a second. So uh, has anyone heard, so if you have one land mass and we have one water mass, that's, that's basically what cre God created there in the beginning. Has anybody heard of Pangea? All right, so that's basically what we're talking about is Pangea. Right? Yeah, so Pangea. And the concept is, I have to move up because I can't read it from here. Uh, so this is how they start out their earth. Pangea, I can't read the number, but it's 200 something million years ago. Then it goes to 200 million years ago. And notice how they move out a little bit and then 150 and they move out. And then 65 million where the dinosaurs were, uh, they move out even more into the present day. See, isn't that neat? And instead of that, here's your little model that shows you how they have determined all this happens. Oh, if you can see, how the earth spread apart during the time of Pangea. Kind of neat. At least, you know, that's what I was taught in school. However, they're wrong. But I'll get to that here in a second. Before we get there, though, let's look at what Pangea actually is. Yeah, let's see. Ooh. Hi. Yep, works. Can y'all see that? Nice. All right, so pan Gia. This is basically a two-part word. It is straight out of Greek. So basically right there is how the word is divided. This is the first word in Greek. What is it? 
One more. Lower. Pond. Pond. Very good. And it means, you don't know what it means yet? This is an adjective. It basically means all or every. That's pon in Greek. And then you got this word. Oops. Yeah, I'll still make it work. Ah, there we go. I can still make it work. Cool. This is another Greek. I'm going to pick on Eli. Abby, what's that say? Come on. You know Greek? But <sighs> Sally, what's that say? Slackers. Gabby, what's it? No, Zach, you're sitting there. Zach, what's it say? No, the one underneath it. It does say Gia in English, but what's the one I just wrote? <laughs> All right, it says guy. <clears throat> Basically, the word is gamma, alpha, yoda. Come on, man. I thought y'all had a better teacher, man. Anyway. So guy is what that word means, or what that word is, and basically what it means is earth or land. So pangea, pan guy, means all earth or every earth or every land or all the land. That's what pangea means. It's all land, okay? That's what that word means. So if you look at the word in English, it says pangea. Does anybody have any kind of idea where that word might mean in English? We've actually kind of changed it. That guy that I had up here, the one that I had up here a second, it was a, uh, it's, not, it's, a, it's, a, it's a noun, but it's a feminine noun. So it, virtually every language but English, they put the gender on the word like uh, Puerto Rico. Amigo, amiga. Uh, male and female, amigo, amiga. They do the same thing in Greek. So the word Gaia, or guy, even though in English, guy sounds like a guy, but it's not what it is. And Gaia, and we put an uh ending on the end of it too. It means earth, but it's a feminine word. So if you've heard the term Mother Nature, Mother Earth, that's exactly where it comes from. They're talking about Mother Nature. They're talking about all earth. They're talking about Pangea. The earth is everything. The earth is where we came from, right? That's where we evolved from. No. But that's the concept behind environmentalism and uh, secular humanism and all that stuff. They, they've used this as their springboard to say, look, it's, we all came from a Pangea. We came from this thing that is Mother Earth. No, it's not. <clears throat> but that's basically what the uh, schools have been teaching for a long time. But... It's just what they've been teaching. That doesn't necessarily mean it's correct, and be careful what your children learn in school. All right. So, ah, oh, man, come on. You can't do that to me. It was working. <laughs> come on. Come on. I don't need that one anymore. Hey, hey. Anyway, well, lost that. Let's move on to the next one. And we'll come back to that. Oh, all right. So um, I do believe that there was a certain type of Pangea that God made in the very beginning because he did create one land mass and one water mass. So that's basically what the Bible says. It says, let all the waters be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And then he said, let all the uh, waters be gathered together in one place. And it was so. So... In a sense, there was something that was similar, not similar, but there was something that we could consider to be a Pangea. But that's not what God used. He didn't make it that way enough for, for us to go and worship it like evolutionists or whatever do. So th like I told you a second ago, this is the Pangea thing and how they tell you it works. A couple of things I want you to recognize about this. Over here is North America and South America on the left. If you watch, there's something that happens that they don't really explain to you too well. All of a sudden, right there, Central America appears. Know why? Because they can't fit it in that model. They decided to take Central America, Puerto Rico, Colombia, and they took them all out. 
Didn't tell you about that. And it looks pretty neat that Africa fits right into South America, right? Stop it. <clears throat> but it, uh, yeah, it looks, it looks like it fits right in there. Africa into South America. <clears throat> but what's not really shown is that as Africa moves over this way, it's going to grow. They don't really explain that to you. The reason why is because Africa is about 40% bigger than South America. In order for Pangea to work, you've got to shrink down Africa. Anyhow, one other thing. Over here is Asia on the top right. <clears throat> if you'll see Africa and Australia and all those, they go and they're going in a clockwise direction. Notice that Asia goes counterclockwise. How convenient. <clears throat> Point being, the model does not work. This Mother Earth, it doesn't work. All right. So like I said, I believe there was a type of one world, uh, one, uh, one land mass, one water mass, because that is what the Bible says. I, this is more along the lines of what I was thinking, though. I can't prove this, and nobody else can either, but I would be willing to say that the Earth was about 80% land and probably about 20% water, obviously, the other... 20%. Point being, there was a whole lot of land in the very beginning and not as much water. <clears throat> Why do I say that? Because of that verse right there. So if you'll turn in your Bible to Isaiah 45, 18, you'll see why I say that this is the way things are. Yeah. Good. All right. Isaiah 45, 18 says, <clears throat> For thus saith the Lord that for thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and had and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. God formed the world to be inhabited. You can't inhabit water. You know what I mean? You need land. We need land. We don't live in the water. So what God did was when he made the world and he said, let it all be gathered together in one place and let the dry appear. That's what he was doing. He was saying, look, I'll, I'm creating this thing for you to inhabit it. I, this is what I want. This is the way that things are going to be. <clears throat> and that's exactly what he did. Now, I can't tell you exactly how big it was, but all I can tell you is that God made the earth to be inhabited, because that's what the Bible says to us, and this is our foundation, and this is just the way we go. <clears throat> but on that note, so if he did make it to be inhabited, um, before something, there was something big that happened that changed this 80% into something else. What was that? Flood. Exactly right. So there was a flood that happened. <clears throat> and part of the flood... Uh, let's do it this way. Yeah, I'm going to write it. Ah, quick thing. Sorry, th th you know, we're, we're trying something new up here, but it seems to be working all right if it wasn't for me, just not knowing. <clears throat> but, uh, so for the, the flood that, uh, that happened, before the flood, though, there was uh, people on the earth. Know what I mean? The flood happened, and uh, so... Uh, Noah was born in the year 1056, absolute. And then it says Noah was 600, so the flood came at around 1656, absolute. Okay, That's when the flood came. <clears throat> Prior to that, there were people that lived on the earth, though. <clears throat> and uh, it's kind of difficult to do the exact estimate, but we can still estimate it. And we do it today. So in the year 2000, for example, we're going to use this one. I'll show you. In the year 2000, this is the uh, rate of population, okay? 1.2%. 1. 1. Yeah, all right, there we go. So that's the population growth in the year 2000 in the world, okay? <clears throat> now, if we take that number and we start with Adam and Eve and we go all the way up to the year 1656, that would give about 750 
million people on the earth at the time of the flood, which is uh, quite a few people. We consider a number. I mean, we do have right around 8 billion today, but let's, uh, let's keep going, though. We're assuming that the birth rate was the same as it was in the year 2000, but let's just up it by one-tenth of a percent. If we use that rate, the actual population of the earth at the time of the flood would have been four billion. Just by upping it by point one percent. And if you got to think about how was the pre-flood earth, we just explained it a minute ago with the canopy and everything like that. It was a pretty nice place to live, you know what I mean? <clears throat> so, considering that, and considering that people used to live to be 900 and something years old before they died, it's pretty safe to say that they had quite a few children. You know what I mean? So, being conservative, let's just up that rate to 1.5%. Okay? Guess what that number comes to? How many people are on the earth if it's at 1.5%? 122 billion by the time of the flood. That's quite an increase. Now, I'm not sure that there was that many people, and I'm not going to say that there was, but if you think about it, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm around the range of about 20 billion, probably. There's probably more pre-flood than there are today, just because people live so much longer and the earth was such a nice place to live. I'm willing to say that there's probably 20 billion. But on that note, we did have the flood of waters that came. So let's say that there was 20 billion. We don't know, but let's say that there was 20 billion and then the flood of waters came. How many people made it through the flood? Eight. Eight. Out of 20 billion, all the rest of them died in that flood. Can you imagine? What a tragedy that would be. Now, I gave you a rough estimate there. 1.5% gives you 122 billion. All right. So there's one other thing I want to show you. Israel was in Egypt for about four, a little over 400 years, right? And we're going to say there was about, about 70 people that went into Egypt, right? When they went into Egypt, they were there for 430 years. And when they left Egypt, how many people left? Does anybody got a clue? A little bit less. Say that again. Oh, you were closer. I think somebody said two. Yeah, two. Two million. So we started at 70 in 430 years. We've got two million. Guess what that growth rate is? 2.5%. And we actually have those numbers. So that's what Israel did just during the time they were in Egypt. Now, could you imagine... Putting that two, well, 1 1.3 to 1 1.5, jump from 4 to 122 billion. I can't even do the math, to tell you the truth, on the 2.5%. But we'd be getting in the trillions. You know what I mean? That's how many people would have been there. If it, you know, and I'm not saying that the, uh, the earth was under the uh, same kind of uh, conditions that the Israelites in Egypt did. You know, we don't know. But what we do know is that there, were, there was, uh, well, we don't know it. But I, I'm willing to say that there were vastly more people on the earth pre-flood than there are today. And all of those people, except for eight, died. God saved those eight. Noah and his family and his, son, his three sons and their three wives. God saved them all. <clears throat> but <clears throat> that's going to get us back to uh, another thing, though. All right. Yeah, let's see if we can do... Sorry about all this. I mean, like I said, I'm, you know, we're trying something new. Ah, man. <laughs> I'm obviously not very good at it. Yeah, we don't need it anymore. That's what I was trying to do. Sorry. <laughs> it outsmarted me. All right. So the Pangea thing, was, you know, like we said, the uh, continents... Uh, they didn't divide up like uh, I showed you a second ago with the model. That can't happen. They have misinterpreted that completely. But the flood did happen. And we have evidence of that all over the place. 
Now, if the flood happened, um, if you take that supercontinent that we had to start with, then you broke it up, right? That's kind of ha what happened during the flood. All those things got broken up. <clears throat> and then we have continents all over the place, and then we have the o oceans in between. But on that note, are the, you know, we see all these different continents, and you think about the Earth, are the continents still connected? Anybody? Yes, they are. It just so happens there's some low spots in between them. And they're filled with water. That's the only thing there is. The whole earth is still one land mass, just like God said. One land. That's what he did. And then he put water in with them, so he made a low spot. Or the low spot might have already been there. I don't know. But what he did was put some, uh, put some water in one spot and land in the, probably the whole rest of it. So if we do have those low spots, like we said, how do we get them? But... Flood, exactly right. That's where it came from. It's, it's got to be from the flood. So if, if it was from the flood, I mean, uh, you've got all these uh, big mountain ranges out there. Were the mountains covered? Yes. How do you know? The Bible does say so. I agree. I'm going to give it to you. Genesis 7, verse 18, And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went up upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. So yeah, you're exactly right. The mountains were covered. Does that include things like uh, Mount Everest? You think it was covered during the flood? I would say yes, and then I'd say no. I do believe Mount Everest was covered, but I don't believe it was Mount Everest. That's what I mean. As the plates, the fountains of the great deep broke open, it caused all the plates that we see to move, move quickly, and then when they collide into each other, it makes mountain ranges, and it also makes low spots. That's where Mount Everest comes from. I will tell you that because of the science that we have today. <coughs> if it were to rain, for 40 days on a mountain the size of Mount Everest, the heat that would be released from that would have been so great, it would have been catastrophic. I mean, it would have caught the ark on fire, literally. That was what, what kind of a heat would release what had just happened right there, is that uh, that mountain could not have been there, is what I'm getting at. And that's one of the arguments that you'll hear from the <clears throat> Pangea people, the evolutionary side, is that, oh yeah, it couldn't have rained on Everest. And they are correct. If it rained on Everest, like that for 40 days, yeah, it would have probably burned everything up. But if Everest wasn't there and it did cover where Everest would be, that's why I would say yes, it did cover it. I would just say no, that it wasn't there until after that. The fountains of the great deep were broken open. And uh, that's what the Bible says. The fountains of the great deep broke open and they all kind of crashed into each other. The next part's going to get significantly longer. So we're going to stop right there. And I'm five minutes ahead of time. So <laughs> look at that. Does anybody got any questions? By the way, before I, before I stop, just uh, throw it out there. No question? No? So y'all understood everything I said? Cool. <laughs> Come on, here you are. All right. All right, thank you all. And then uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Bridget. All right, good night. God bless. <laughs>